Yep. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. It's time for the Wolf Den Podcast. Hello. How you doing? Welcome. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about... Right off the bat, I want to do this right off the bat. Well, right off the bat, let's I do wanna it. I want to just... Because, listen, I feel like this episode, mm-hmm. we're going to get a lot of people who might not have seen the show before. Okay. So, I'm just going to straight up... This is the new PS5. <laughs> uh, usually we do a lot of little tomfoolery at the beginning of the show. This is a two-hour long podcast, yeah. but a lot of people are gonna just be coming here to For see that. what this looks like. Okay. That's what it looks like. Okay, this is a rumor. It, yes, it is a rumor. It is speculation, but there is a lot of evidence to suggest that it is real. Yeah, and I usually I'm very skeptical of rumors. I'm all in on this. I still have my questions about it, but I guess we can get into that when we get to actually talking about it. So if you're fucking off right now, you're going to (laughs) miss that conversation. Yeah, uh, we will. We'll get a lot more in depth into this. I just wanted to get it out there so everybody sees it. So we're not like clickbaiting or anything. That's what we're talking about. And we can go on to more important things. Like why this bag of cornbread mix was on my seat when I came in here. So I bought MREs for a bit. <laughs> yeah. So I figured you you like cornbread. I do like cornbread. So never, there you go. I've never had a military grade cornbread before. <laughs> there it is. But I'll, all right, I will. Uh, this will go good. I was making. There quite, was. I'm not making chili tomorrow night anyway. Well, so the main thing was chili. Really? Threw that right in the trash. <laughs> they also have dehydrated uh, instant coffee. That's got to so have that. That's, that's got to taste bad. Probably. They yeah. also give you gum. Okay. You know, like two pieces of gum. Yeah. They give you a lot of like weird stuff in those things. There was a lot. Yeah. Salt, pepper, um, napkins. Right. Anyway. So there you go. Enjoy your enjoy your <laughs> MRE cornbread. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure how to make it. You'll figure it out. I'm sh- what is it? Just water? <laughs> Probably. It's got to be simple. Yeah. That, so there, it does come with the thing that heats up. Uh-huh. It can't heat up that much. Right. Uh. So I don't know. Put some hand warmers next to it. Maybe. I it'll, mean, maybe I it'll have a stove <laughs> and an <laughs> oven. Oh, oh, okay. Good. <laughs> um. All right. Another thing I wanted to talk about right off the bat. Yes. Uh. This right here is the refurbished Steam Deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the other Steam Deck. This is the uh, Bob Wolf Steam Deck. The Bob Wolf Steam Deck. I wanted to show you something about this refurbished Steam Deck. Uh, I'm not sure how best to show you. Because I, I was, just before you got here, I was filming me unboxing this and stuff. Right. And I noticed that there, I had a lot of high hopes for this refurbished Steam Deck. Because like, how bad could a refurbished Steam yeah. Deck be? You can All the parts are pretty much modular. You can do whatever you want yeah. with it. Um I want you to hold it. Okay. And then uh, lock the screen. I think that's the best way to show uh, it. You pr- uh, top right. Top the power button. Just yeah. Once. Okay. And so. look at the screen when you do it. All right. So far, so good. And then just tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Did you notice anything? The little eye came up and blinked. Right. Uh, do it again and then look at the corners of the screen. Okay. Doing it again. Okay. What am I looking for? Well, close the screen. Like, lock it. And then look at the corners of the screen. Lock. My, what and I'm then, trying to convey is that the sides of the screen have a really, really bad uh, backlight bleed for some reason. I didn't notice. I don't know what that's about. Okay. And I want you to look at it and tell me if it's wor- if you would send that back. Hmm. I'm not sure that I would, but the more I was playing with it, the more I was like, you know what? This might be an issue. I noticed it the most on the top left of the screen, the top, not the very corner, but the top left. Okay. Uh, there was like a little bit of light, light bleed. I mean, I'm not really seeing anything that would like, you know, cause alarm or okay. in any way. If like you're pointing it out to me and I don't see it. Okay. That's good. So that's, I, that's I would good. Not- I would not worry about it. Because I do want to put a one terabyte SSD in here, and right. then I want to give it away. Yeah. But if I open it up, they're not going to do a refurb, yeah. you know? And I want to be able to open it up to see what else is messed up with this thing. Right. I think that's the that's where I noticed it. When I open up the menu, you can see on the top left, there's like a little bit of bleed. 
That I don't think okay. is enough to return. Yeah, but no, I when I close so. the screen, I saw it all around the screen. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think that's going to be enough to. Okay. I don't know if I could show it to you guys. You probably can't. It'd really be hard see to it. show on screen. Yeah, it's, the, it's this part right here. Yeah. It's like a, there's like a little bit of gradient, and maybe you could see it if I close the screen. Yeah, you could see it really bad right there on screen. Yeah. Uh, would you return that, people at home? Would you send that back to Valve? Anyway, uh, more stuff to bury the lead here. We got cringe is dog doge. Thank you for the prime. We got rise frog. Thanks for the thirty two months. What is up, Wolf Bros? I have been playing Street Fighter VI, currently trying to get to Diamond Rank. I am Platinum Four right now. There is a TMNT collab in Street Fighter VI. That's cool. I was curious if you all had anything to say. I did see the TMNT collab. I think the it's costumes. It's not like the actual characters. Mm -hmm. It's costumes for your creative character. The costumes are cool. However, the costumes cost $15 each. So if you want yeah. to get all four tur turtles, oh. you're paying essentially the price of the game. <laughs> is there a package? No. And as far as I could tell, you can't just put down $60. You have to do like the weird Capcom points or whatever it's called. You, let's be real. You get the RAF one and you pretend <laughs> like you're all of them. Yes. That's what because you if you know comics, you know they all wear red. Yes. Um, Literally everyone in the chat said yes, they would return the Steam Deck. <laughs> So now I don't know what to do. Okay. I think I'm going to make the video anyway and then say, hey, Valve, because I have they have watched my videos before. Okay. I think I might be like, hey, Valve, do a giveaway with me. Yeah. You know, like, do, do you help have, me out. Do you have, like, a contact over there? Or do you, like, can you kind get a contact of, over there? Like, I, I've i talked to them through Twitter DMs before. Okay. Um. So I think what I'm going to do is make the because i, I want to make the video for the, otherwise i don't have a video for this week. yeah i want to make the video and say i'm sure i can return it i will reach out to them even though i put the new ssd in here mm -hmm. and i'll uh see if they're willing to work with me and i'll update you guys in a youtube short or something um but yeah i mean that's a realistic review of the of the steam deck i mean right yeah turns out there was a screen issue i don't, I don't know <laughs> um Anyway, we got, uh, where are we? We got Max McGowan. Thank you for the three months. A or Adu Abdullah. Thank you for the 13 months. Tokyo Pixel Links for the two months. Chili Mac MRE for the win. There, it did come with a cheese sauce. Well, that's got to be real yeah. cheese. <laughs> Hannah wanted it. Uh, Cisco Yeeted. Thanks for these 31 months. And Retro News. Thanks for the prime. I'm just a cry baby bitch about tech I buy. I mean, I, it's oh, it's three hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, uh, it is refurbished, so I guess I, there's like a little bit of an expectation that's. I mean, no, there shouldn't really be an expectation it's, that something's it's that wrong. Refurbished by Valve, yeah. so you expect them to have a higher quality than say like GameStop refurbished. Yeah, you know. You know what I didn't try though. Uh, w if you mess around with the brightness, it should change things a little bit okay. uh, i don't know how much more that will help or or hurt it oh it's like all the way up so that's not gonna no so yeah this is screwed up mm -hmm. very very weird i mean i do want to open it up and see what's up but uh we'll cross that bridge when we get to it bottom right is also messed up the screen looked new right it was not a scratch on it there was a little bit of dust on it though when i took it out anyway uh is that it i think we did it yeah well when they say it goes through a ton of tests it should be near mint partially furbished <laughs> <laughs> if they did it should be better yeah gamestop is all they they mentioned in their press release that gamestop is also going to be selling refurbished uh steam decks uh but they are gamestop refurbished so yeah. uh, the quality it's probably going to be lower mm -hmm. all right Let's talk about the PS5. Yes. Uh, Sony has been rumored to be working on a revision of the PlayStation 5, uh, often referred to as the PS5 Slim. That includes a removable disk drive. And now images and a video have leaked of a PlayStation 5 model that looks slimmer and slightly shorter and may well have a removable disk drive. The first image leak uh, of the rumored PS5 Slim 
in a Chinese forum er earlier today, uh, and now a leaked video provides a better look at this rumored device. The video from Better Way Electronics, an Australian PlayStation repair specialist, uh, shows off the, ca uh, the plastic case of a potential future model of the PS5. It has a bulge for its disk drive and a curve in its middle with a smaller space for vents, uh, two slits on each side of the case, and dual USB-C ports on the front instead of a single USB-C and USB-A ports found on the current PS5 model. Uh, Insider Gaming reported last year that Sony was prepping for a PS5 with a detachable disk drive for September 2023. Uh, it's rumored that the next PS5 model will be sold on its own without the disk drive or in a bundle, which means the slimmer model could uh, soon become the PlayStation 5 default, allowing people to attach a drive later. Uh, currently, you have to buy either a $400 PS5 digital edition or a $500 PS5 with a disk drive or a $600 Spider-Man version, if you're Will, and an idiot. Um, Microsoft certainly seems to think that a uh, PS5 Slim model is on the way later this year. An Xbox maker ref uh, referenced the rumor in documents that were filed by, that was filed uh, in part uh, of the FTC versus Microsoft hearing last month. Microsoft seems to think a PS5 Slim will be priced at $400, the same price point as the PS5 Digital Edition. Sony also started its first PS5 sales in the UK, Germany, India, and other parts of Europe recently. The price shop promotions uh, started just as Sony announced it had sold 40 million PlayStation 5s since the console's launch. Uh, if, the, if the original rumors hold true, then we are only a few weeks left to find out whether the PS5 Slim is genuine and whether these leaked photos and videos were the real deal. Uh, are there photos? Because I only see the video. Uh, I couldn't find anything else besides this one video. Let me see if I can find if anyone else had uh, photos of it. This, I mean, so we've been talking about this rumor for a while, pretty much since Inside Gaming said something about mm -hmm. it. And... We were pretty much, I mean, I was pretty much of the mind that, because uh, the rumors were also saying that there was a PlayStation 5 Pro model. Yes. And I was like, no. Yeah. There's that, no way that's so. going to happen. Uh, I was on board with this one. Uh, and this now looks like it is a tangible thing we can see. Uh, and they did this with the Project Q right before that was released. Was it before? Well, Project Q still isn't released. Right. Yeah, it was after the the. Well, anyway, we've seen shit like this, and it seemed pretty I legit. Think, I think the I more think this pertinent looks pretty thing legit. is that history has shown us that Sony has released a slim version of every single PlayStation they've yeah. ever done, and and the PS5 is probably the console that needs it the <laughs> yes, most. Yes, the P PlayStation Five is massive. So it's huge. I think the PS3 needed it. The PS3 needed it for a variety of reasons. It was big. It was huge. But it was also not selling very well. Right. So a redesign not only did it make it smaller, but it was also like a reintroduction into the world. The PlayStation 5 does not need a reintroduction. It is currently the best-selling uh, console of this generation, not including the Switch. Um, people are, you know, it's just now getting out to market. Like, it's more available in the market than it had been yeah the past people few years. can find it at best buy yeah like walk in and you know be a and they just it. like i said before they just announced the spider-man version which is the you know the old design but with the spider-man graphic right. on it that that's the last hurrah of, of this of which this leads me to believe that this is not coming out this year right i think I'm, they I'm, might i'm with you on i that. think they might have like got it done early and they might have like you know started sending it out to some people maybe like accessory makers and stuff but they're not going to release it just yet because they just sh showed up the spider-man version they're they're still selling the current model there's a there's a sale going on right now it's like 50 dollars off but people are actually now able to find it easier and don't have to like hunt it down or like search on ebay or anything like that this might be an early next year thing i think people think are so? speculating holiday but i think this is early next year this is this seems pretty done yeah. I mean, I don't know what the internals are like, but I mean, if they have the case, they got to have the internals figured out. Well, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they have the case and then they're still working on shrinking the internals down. So I'm assuming that uh, this... So this is going to be $400, which mm. is an awesome price point, right. I think. Uh, I think that they probably figured out a way to make things cheaper for themselves because right. the PlayStation five, they raised the price in a lot of markets. Yeah. 
uh, because it was hard to manufacture for them. Well, it sounds like that four hundred dollar price point mm -hmm. is because they're going to sell it without the disc drive, right? And then they're going to sell the disc drive as an add on for an additional price. So I think selling it without the disc drive. Even selling it without the disk drive on top of that, I think it's still cheaper than it is for them to manufacture the diskless PlayStation 5, if yeah. that makes sense. Because yeah. you got to make the same thing twice, mm -hmm. one just with an extra piece of kit in it. So now so, they can just focus on making one model. Yeah, but even the stuff in there, I think this model is them saying, now here's a way to make it cheaper for us. Because right. that's usually what the slim ones are. They They... they make the console that they can with what they have. And then mm -hmm. a few years later, they're like, okay, we figured out a streamlined process to get the same quality product. We worked out some of the kinks. Maybe the quality is a little better. And here's a more streamlined manufacturing process. Here's right. a cheaper version. So uh, this should be easier to manufacture for them too. Uh, why is there a bulge for the on the side? That's the disk drive. Wait, I thought this was the disk list vert. I yeah, they, he attached the disk. That's it with the disk drive attached. Okay, I'm 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 confused. Okay, I see. So that yeah. cut. Okay, so that's why the cut's there. Yeah, the cut seems like a really weird design choice. This generation. It yeah, it's is interesting. <laughs> you got one company making a refrigerator, and you got another company. You have it right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Will's getting my place. Yes, my I'm Xbox finally, I am finally <laughs> entering the next generation. Uh, yeah, you got one that's making a refrigerator and one that's making a big ass router. And this looks definitely smaller. I mean, he's able to hold it with one hand. Yeah. Doing that with the PlayStation 5, you can. It's rough. Doing it with that was really <laughs> difficult, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the cut is a weird design choice, but it makes sense if part of the panel is you slotting on the disk drive. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, I guess I'll get a disk drive for... I mean, I'm going to get this because I'm going to have to make a video on right, it. Right, right. I guess I'll get the disk drive too. I mean, it makes sense to make a video on that too. Um, well, yeah, you'd have to get both. Most of my games are digital. It, like, I told myself on PlayStation 5, I would be physical, but mm -hmm. uh, most of my most of the stuff I so, play is... so much easier to get. I mean, the only reason but, why... I'm just not playing a lot of AAA stuff, right. honestly. The only reason why like, I wanted a disc-based PlayStation 5 because I have all those disc PS4 games. Mm. So if I ever wanted to put those in and play, I have the option for it. But otherwise, yeah, I would I would try to go as digital as possible with my yeah. games. Yeah. That's I mean, that's how I am on Switch. That's yeah. how I am on Steam. I mean, honestly, I'm playing a lot more stuff on Steam because I have yeah. the option to play it on my Steam Deck, on my... Yeah, yeah. On all these different litany of devices. Um, or Game Pass because Game Pass also lets me play it on a litany of devices. Yeah. Until Sony gets there, I I I'm not I'm not really into this. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I've been wanting a refreshed PlayStation Five for a really long time. I think that it's the one that we have is ugly and way too big. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of other stuff that's just not very optimized. It it gets hot really really easily. Uh, there's a lot of like uh stuff in the os that's not very optimized it yeah. took us a year to over a year to get 1440p in the, in the i think two years to get 1440p yeah. in the console and it took us a year to get the internal storage to be unlocked so we can put our own ssds in yeah it. it seemed like a console that was not ready for the the prime time and this will definitely be a better version of that so i'm just looking back uh for the last two so the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4, it was the three year, there was a three year gap between when the original release and when the slim model came out. Mm -hmm. And in the case of the PlayStation 3, it was another three years before the super slim model came out. Right. So this is pretty much in line with when Sony would release the slim model of a PlayStation. Uh, well, but, the console came out in 2019. 2020. PS4. The PS5 came out, came out in 2020, 2020 yeah. Oh. And we're currently in 2023. I thought it was 20. So we're oh, we're oh, there. Okay. Yeah. But by the same token, uh, when did the PS... I think this slow. generation is slower. I, I think we're getting slower and slower with the... Uh, Moore's Law? What do you call it when, when you... Uh, oh, yeah. When you... Well, I don't think it's just that. I think, that, you know, people, for, people forget. You shouldn't forget. The pandemic, like, really like screwed things up for everyone mm -hmm. so you know we had a whole like two years where nobody left their house and 
you know, things like this were really difficult to get. And people are just now, you know, being, like I said, people are just now able to go into a Target, see a PlayStation 5 in stock, buy one and take it home with them. It's, I'm, I'm not surprised that Sony was working on this. I'm just surprised that they're, stay, you know, staying the course and releasing it or seemingly releasing it so soon, you know? So soon? Yeah. Because I would imagine, we, you know, it wouldn't be until like the fifth year of the PS5. I don't think. No, con- I think it. I I think it's necessary because of how uh, ugly the fucking thing is. Yes, and, and also because they were having manufacturing issues. Right. But I think they, they got they over they the sorted those out. I don't know how much they sorted out. They they, they are able to produce more now, uh-huh. but. Them lowering the price in other markets leads me to believe that they want to make more money off of the the sales of each individual PlayStation 5. Right. And the only way to do that is to design it in a way where it's cheaper to manufacture. Understandable, yes. Uh, I mean, with that said, I don't think this generation is going to... Like, people say, like, you're, the average video game generation is, like, five to six years. Mm-hmm. I very much believe that this current generation, the Xbox series and the PlayStation 5 generation, will be a 10-year generation because yeah yeah i think it will be insanely long yeah yeah, because these systems are so powerful studios are still not using these machines to their full potential um studios are still struggling to make games for these systems yeah so we're not really seeing you know the types of games we think of when we think of next gen games we're getting some we're getting some here and there but we're not getting anywhere near the volume that we've seen in the past. Yeah, it, it's definitely slowed down a lot. And some yeah. of it is that games are just really hard to develop now. Yeah. Um, but also, I think software is having a hard time keeping up with hardware. Yeah. I, I think I think that we've our hardware is so good now. And there's not... We're still trying to figure out how to push it to its limits, you yeah. know? Uh, I mean, eventually... You know the the we'll hit 8K at some point on on the PS5. Yeah, remember when that launched? That was the thing. Yeah. Was like we will get you can get 8K 30 frames per second yeah. games. Not a single game can do that. <laughs> uh, I'm just I'm gonna Google 8K PS5 games just to see I the don't tourist. Think, I don't it's think. gonna be all like weird shit. Crisis Two Remastered. Okay. Are you kidding me? I mean, somebody get me an 8K monitor <laughs> for crisis 2 remastered asus you got anything i mean to be to be fair that would look sick crisis 2 <laughs> yeah so the tourist is one of them who i don't need that in 8k no how do i what is this website i don't want to hear about i mean pewdiepie and marzia i want to <laughs> wikipedia just have playstation 5 games I mean, Google just straight up says Taurus, Lords of the Fallen, Quantum Error, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Okay. How do you get that to be? Uh, and Crisis 2 Remastered. But then you click on it and it says 4K60. I don't know. I think we saw last generation a lot of games were having a hard time reaching 1080p60. And I think just because these systems can theoretically do 4K60 mm-hmm. doesn't mean we're going to get 4K60 consistently. I remember we're, the tourist. Yeah. Oh, wait. 4K. It's 8K60. Okay. That's wild. But, I mean, look. It's a, it's a voxel yeah, game. Yeah, it's a, it's a chibi game. Yeah. So, it's not very impressive. Yeah, you know, I think that's the thing. Like, people, when they hear 8K60 or really 8K120, which is what, you know, the real gamers want, they're thinking <laughs> of games like, you know, Call of Duty or Skyrim or, you know, like the big AAA games. Yeah. And those games are not going to hit that for a very long time because they're still having, you know, trouble hitting 4K 30 in yeah. a lot of cases. Yeah. So. Yeah. I I think it's going to be a really long time till we need consoles to even get to like a ridiculously high resolution. A lot of the games that have come out, the only reason why they're not on last gen, as we've seen, is because it's just easier to put them out on current gen yeah. so that they just run. You know? I think it would be really helpful to allow these consoles better tools to hit higher frame rates. Right. So 
I mean, 4K 120 frames per second is awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, I use I run everything at that pretty much now because it's just all these monitors that I'm getting for all of these uh, new devices are are set <laughs> up to be for the new Xbox and the PlayStation or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that console gamers could benefit from doing something like 1080p at 240 frames per second. Yeah. And that'd be great. Like when, when they play Street Fighter at Evo, they're playing it on PlayStations. Yeah. So giving them access to super high frame rates would probably be great for for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know how that works on the console side. I'm pretty sure Xbox, you just plug it in and you're good. But on PlayStation, I don't know if a game can just turn that switch on. You know, right. I don't know that, how much demand there is for that. I also saw that um, the... I think we talked about this when we when the consoles first came out, but Xbox Series X, you plug that thing in and it does 4K, 120 HDR and everything. Right. PlayStation, I think 4K, 120, it interlaces it. Okay. You know, it does that weird thing where it's not like true HDR right, 120. Right, right. You know, it's it, the 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 bit rate is a little nerfed. Mm -hmm. Maybe that'll be different on this. Maybe, but I I doubt it. I like the idea of this, something that's a little cheaper. I mean, it, it you do have to pay a, presumably $100 for the disk drive. Yeah, um, which sucks, but... It sucks, but this is definitely going to be a better console than what we currently have. Yes. Hopefully putting the SSD in is just as easy. It makes it makes me wonder, like, you know, because Sony made a big deal about, like, you can buy, like, new faceplates for it. They sell mm -hmm. custom faceplates for it. Um, are they going to do the same thing with this? Are Hopefully, we, are we gonna you know be able to get a custom face? Are we gonna be able to get that disc drive in whatever color we want? That's the faceplates. The problem. Yeah, the disc drive is the major problem. You're gonna see like an all black with like a white disc drive yeah. on, the, on the side. I did see. I was at a game store yesterday and I saw they were selling all different colors of the of the uh, PS5 um, shells for a hundred dollars each. Really? Yeah. They're only supposed to be like 50, which is still too high. And I think they're just available. Like, I, yeah. you could just buy them. Yeah. I know the Spider-Man one and like special edition ones are like 65. The black one was hard to get for. No, it's 55 bucks. I get mean, it right like, now. The black one's the one people want. <laughs> they do have the Spider-Man one. Yeah. That's pretty cool. The yeah. uh, absolute ugliest one is the lebron james i don't one. understand the LeBron that is james so one. dumb i do not understand it and it's nothing given everything is earned what about nepo baby <laughs> this is so dumb uh well as i've as his magnum opus space jam a new legacy has taught me you have to be able to put in the work because otherwise the ai is going to come and just take everything from you and make everything a reference to a reference to a reference to a reference oh that was about ai yeah am i the only one in this room who's seen space jam new legacy definitely i did it so i did it for you people i am the hero you deserve uh all right anyway. yeah let's change topics before i go off on that movie <laughs> We can thank some people again. We got... I don't know where I last left off. Um, probably Retro Muse, thanks for the Prime. Blackbird, thanks for the 17 months. Hey, Wolf Bros, here's my Bezo Bucks. Also, is that Sonic on the shelf behind Will? It's uh, Sonic. Yeah. You gotta talk a little more. There it is. Ja Jackson got me that. Uh, who... Han Newman, thank you for the 13 months. Hey, Wolf Bros, really liked your Game Boy 35XX video. I really liked the transition effect. Well, thanks. What transition effect? What did I do? I don't know. Which one was that one? The 35XX. The I put an emulator in a Game Boy. Oh, right, right, right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, 8 Bits and Rips, thank you for the 32 months. Jackson Artist, thank you for the 4 months. And Big Dad Mayhem, thank you for the 10 months. Uh... I'll never buy a console that requires internet to work with even the BIOS having DRM. Then I'd just get a better PC. I mean, the problem is, like, everything requires internet to work now. Yeah, like, even, even toasters. Updates and stuff. You know? Actually, I don't think the Steam Deck worked with, without internet. 
now that I think Probably about it. Probably not. When I was setting it up just now, I think it needed to be connected yeah. to even just install the first update. All right. Uh, that's it. Yeah, PS5. that's it. Play can, PS5 Slim. It's coming. Probably not this year. But look out. But... All right, so now the question is, if you want a PlayStation 5, do you wait or do you just get the current model? That is a that is a you problem. If, <laughs> if, if you are deciding whether or not you want to get a PS5, you got to decide whether or not it's worth waiting a year. Well, or potentially. A yeah, year. I think it, like the PlayStation 5s are currently on sale right now. I don't think that has anything to do with the fact is that there's a new model coming. I think that, you know, they sold a lot. They can afford to have a sale now. Okay. I think that that's what that's about. So if you have been waiting for a while and there are next gen only games that you want to play, then yes, I think you can afford to get one now. If wait, wait, where's the sale? What are you talking about sale? Target, uh, I think Amazon even. What is the sale? It's just $50 off a of PlayStation 5. Oh, yeah. That's very good. Uh, yeah. And it, it comes with a disc drive. So. Yeah. So it, it is big and ugly, though. It is, you know, if if space is a factor, then maybe wait. Has some weird power issues that will hopefully get ironed out. Yeah, too. We'll see if I get mine if I have any of the same power issues as you. Uh, there have been minor revisions, so, right? So potentially. Um, Wood said his also like would just consume so much power that it would like short out like all of the time. Okay, I don't know if that's the same issue. Um. I should plug it into a. Uh, I have a thing that like reads the 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 voltage that it takes. I should plug that in and see how much it takes while it's just sleeping. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Pokemon Company. Okay. Let's talk about how the Pokemon Company is having conversations about its constant release schedule. Uh, the Pokemon Company is having internal conversations about maintaining game quality amid its constant release schedule. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were criticized last year for technical issues, including broken PVE, uh, a rigged battle system, uh, duplication glitches, a bizarre method for running at double speed, and more, which Nintendo was forced at gunpoint to apologize <laughs> for. Uh, some have suggested the relentless pace of Pokemon game releases has had an adverse effect on quality, not to mention the health of the developers at Game Freak, with several launches in the Nintendo Switch era alone. Uh, 2018's Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, 2019 Sword and Shield, and 2022's Legends Arceus and Scarlet and Violet will be joined by an unannounced game in the works, plus several DLC expansions. Speaking to the Pokemon Company COO, uh, Takato Yutsiono Mia, did I get it? Nailed it. Okay. At the Pokemon World Championships, comicbook.com asked if there was a release schedule the Pokemon Company was beholden to. Uh, quote, I think in general, if you look at the past, the path we've taken up until now has been this constant release, always regularly releasing product on a fairly fixed kind of cadence, you might say. Always having these products able to be introduced and new experiences to our co uh, consumers uh, that have, and that's how we've operated up until now. I think we're still operating in that way. But there's more and more conversations as the development environments change about how we can continue to do this while making sure that we're ensuring real quality, uh, we're ensuring that really quality products are also being introduced. While these comments do not commit to a more relaxed release schedule, they do hint at an acknowledgement that the current pace many need, uh, many need reconsidered uh, to prevent further launches like Scarlet and Violet. The poor performance has also was also a major factor in IGN's 6 out of 10 review, uh, stating the open world gameplay of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is a brilliant direction for the future of the franchise, but this promising shift ha is sabotaged by a number of ways in which Scarlet and Violet feel deeply unfinished. Uh, this, they're, they're like, we're trying to figure out how to not have yearly releases. Yeah. Just just don't, don't do that and then that's it and then yeah. that you're done i I bake it in the oven a little more i saw i was there was a chart somewhere i forgot where i saw it but it basically had like how the time between sequels for video games is getting longer and longer mm -hmm. like it was five years between tears of the kingdom and breath of the wild it's been 10 years since gta 5 we still haven't gotten gta 6 yet 
um, which is different because it was like it was like five years between GTA four and five. Mm-hmm. So, in an, in the industry, it's taking longer and longer to make sequels. Pokemon, of course, because they're an outlier, they do things differently. They're still stuck in this. We got to release a game over two years. Yeah, uh, mindset that you know I think is finally catching up with them and is finally hurting them in a way. Are they going to do something about it though? Yeah, you think they are? Well, I think they're going to do something. I don't know if it'll be enough. Mm-hmm. I don't think they know how to develop games. <laughs> I think that they have forgotten <laughs> or they haven't changed with the time. Yeah, I don't think it's that they've forgotten. I think there's that they have one formula that works and they don't that, that they can't. worked. True. It well, well, you know, it works because they sell they break records every time. Right. Again. Well, you know, to your point, it worked, but just because it worked in 1998 doesn't mean <laughs> yeah. it's going to continue to work in 2028. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. I think that if they keep releasing games on the the, the in the same quality as Scarlet and Violet, even Sword and Shield, I'll say, if they keep releasing games like that, they will fall off and they will not be breaking records anymore. Right. I've been arguing with people about how some people think Pokemon is too big to fail. I think we've seen so many things that are too big to fail that have come crashing and burning. Well, I think things that have been number one in their industry and now they're just like a like a blip in our right. memory. Well, too big to fail is uh has two meanings. One is the literal sense. It's so big, it's so popular mm-hmm. that even if it completely and utterly sucks, there's no way it can fail. Yeah. There's another side to that where it's so big that if it does fail, it could have catastrophic effects for not just the Pokemon company, but for Nintendo as a whole. Yeah. Because if if Pokemon you know, continues down this trend and it does wind up just people just stop buying it, mm-hmm. then that's a giant cash cow that Nintendo loses. And, you know, the Pokemon company is like, what are we going to do? The one thing we're known for, we can't do good anymore. Yeah. So I think, you know, there's a lot at stake out here for them to get it right. Uh, Flow in the chat says Nintendo slash the Pokemon company slash Game Freak should take the Call of Duty approach and have multiple groups working on different versions with one releasing each year. Works for Call of Duty. I think they should take the Microsoft approach. Nintendo should allow them resources from other studios and say, here, we own part of you. You're clearly struggling. And And Nintendo even came out and said, we do not uh we're sorry that the quality is so bad like well, nintendo was like this is not up to par with our nintendo's standards. like no stranger to that they got uh people from monolith soft the people who make uh xenoblade to help on the last two zelda games because mm-hmm. their experience with like big open worlds so they're not strangers to that concept i think the problem you run into is the fact that technically speaking Pokemon is a separate entity. Yeah. They're owned by the Pokemon company that Nintendo has a minority stake in. Mm-hmm. So Nintendo could have, you know, insight and suggestions, but by, at the end of the day, it's what the Pokemon company says that goes. Yeah. So the Pokemon company could just one day be like, you know what? We're buying you out. We're going to go put our games on PlayStation. That could very well happen. Yeah. No, it could. So. But that being said, the Pokemon company could very well say, you know what? We're going to stop working with Game Freak. We're going to give it to another studio That's to make true. this game. I don't think the Pokemon company even really prioritizes games. I think they make them every year because it's a giant cash cow. Well, now, yeah. Uh, and that's where they get the ideas for all of the other stuff. Yeah. Um, but Game Freak needs to... Sh- somebody needs to shape up Game Freak. So I need to go over there and be like, hey, man, you're doing things not in the right Maybe way. Maybe Game Freak just needs to, like, make a non-Pokemon game. It could be that the Pokemon company is forcing Game Freak to release once a year. I absolutely which is usually yeah. how it works with publishers and stuff. Yeah. If a game is rushed, it's the publisher's fault. This is kind of along that topic, but did you see that IGN video about uh, Baldur's Gate? No. And that uh, f- one, of the, one of the guys from IGN, because... A lot of developers are tweeting like because Baldur's Gate three is like a big deal. Everyone's is blowing up. Everyone's like really happy with it. It's really popular. But a lot of like indie developers saying like, please don't expect every game to be Baldur's Gate mm-hmm. because that's just not technically possible. 
and the IGN videos being like, well, why not? Why can't every <laughs> game be Baldur's Gate? You know, uh, yeah, Blizzard has like all thousands of people. They can make Diablo as polished as Baldur's Gate is. And I think that's missing like the fact that, you know, Baldur's Gate was made by a team who like put their game out a certain way. Whereas Diablo is being made by Activision mm -hmm. who tell developers that a game has to come out on this day, yeah. regardless of whether or not it's finished. And if it's not finished, we'll just fix it in post after the game's already out. Because they also spend like, you know, hundreds of million dollars in marketing. So yeah. like if the game doesn't hit that date, there goes the hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. of marketing. Yeah. So there, there's a lot at play here that like, you know, you, you like, no, you can't just make a game as good as Baldur's Gate. But at the same time, like, there's a lot that goes into making a game as good as Baldur's Gate. That's not just like, you know, do what they did. I think... I I appreciate some of the argument, like yeah, uh, no, like Pokemon should not be as bad as it is. No, yeah. Um, at the same time, not every like little game is gonna hit the quality of something like Baldur's Gate. Yeah, but I think Baldur's Gate is a great example of taking an old formula that is just like basic, like take a guy, move him here, and that's and yeah. and make him attack another guy. You know, it's like it, it, that you could play that type of game on a phone. Like it's very yeah. simple. It's just chess pieces, basically. But uh, Pokemon is also that sort of basic formula. Yeah. I run into a Pokemon, I go into an animation, and then I'm hitting menu option yeah. to fight the Pokemon. There's no reason why that formula can still be there, but with a nice new UI, a new polish. Like, yeah. like make it a lot more streamlined. When I'm done fighting a Pokemon, I shouldn't see all these stats pop up. It should just happen, yeah. you know? When I want to attack a Pokemon, it should have the last move that I use right at the front. It should just, everything should just be fucking streamlined. Yeah. Like it is in, I've only seen a little bit of Baldur's Gate, but that looks very modern and very yeah. easy to understand. Uh, and again, it's an old formula. So yeah. I don't, I, they gotta, they gotta change things. I think around. the Pokemon company can afford to like not release a new mainline Pokemon game mm. for like five years. I think if they just spend the next, because that's about as long as it takes to make a game like in this world as it is. If they just take the next five years to focus on making the next Pokemon game. And then they can release like their little spinoffs here and there to like get some cash flow in and whatnot. Like a Detective Pikachu or a I think Mystery Dungeon. Five whatnot. years is a long time. It's a long time, but I think, you know, like I said, we've grown used to that. You know, five years between Zeldas, it was almost 10 years between Last of Us's, hmm. you know, five years between God of Wars. Like, we're growing accustomed to that. But he here's the problem, is that there it's not going to be as good as a five-year-long Zelda or Mario or Final Fantasy. Well, we don't know that. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they need a good, solid... They're gonna. This is what's going to happen. They're going to take two. Yeah. But they need a good three to make a game that's better than the last two that we got. I I honestly think... It won't be amazing, but it'll be better. I mean, they could do something like this. They can take... If they take the five years, they take as much time as they need, they come out with the next Pokemon game. If that does well, and by does well, I don't mean it sells well. I mean, it's the game we want. It's not a broken mess, mm -hmm. uh, and it plays well. Then, with the tools they have and the formulas they implement, then they could take like two years yeah. to make, you know, a Pokemon game. Yeah. You know, then they, then the, the development timeline shrinks a little bit, you know, they still have to like rearrange the map and create new characters and stuff, but then the timeline, you know, everything was in place. The timeline can shrink. So, I don't know what their team is like. Okay, it says, I, I was just Googling it. Uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, this is according to Tama on Twitter. Uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet had a larger team than Breath of the Wild based on Yikes. console credits. Miyamoto said that the number one issue plaguing Breath of the Wild before release was budget, that it was expensive to hire 300 plus people working on the game. Scarlet and Violet had 500 ish people. Okay. I don't believe that. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I mean, I, th I think that they just had to credit a lot of people. I don't think that they had a big team working on this game. Oh, I believe it. 
because it's just they not- have they have like at least a thousand people working on you know a level of Call of Duty. Yeah. So yeah, it- but that's a a good level. <laughs> they make a good level. But like you see my point, like I can like that seems small in in a in a sense of making a game as big as Pokemon should be. Mm-hmm. You know, so maybe that explains why the game is buggy because they needed more people. I think the game is mostly buggy because they're working on a really old antiquated engine. Yeah. And they don't have time to make a new better one because they're just pumping out games. Right. They need to start from scratch mm-hmm. or just or just use Unreal. I don't know. But they'd still have to make a baseline for, for the game yeah. in Unreal. Um, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl was in Unity. So they're 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 not opposed to you yeah. know using different engines, um, but they need to make a new baseline in a new engine, whether they make it or whether they just pull from something else, uh, and make that awesome and take a few years to do that, yeah. and then uh, when they get that going, then they can go back to releasing every other year. I think every other year is reasonable. You know, like yeah. every year is ridiculous for anybody, even Call of Duty, right? Even though they make an okay product when they do it. Yeah. Um, they're really good at bouncing well, between teams. And I stuff. mean, Call of Duty at this point, you know, you hate to say it, but it's like, it's the difference between like a Toyota Camry and an Aston Martin. Like a Toyota Camry is made on an assembly line mm-hmm. by machines. In addition to people, they can pump out like 50 Toyota Camrys in an hour. It's no problem for them. Every Toyota Camry is the same. And Aston and Martin. Toyota Camry is going to last you a while. It's a really good true. quality product. It's true. So maybe, cheap, but... so maybe this isn't a good example. <laughs> but my point is Aston Martins are made by hand. Mm-hmm. So there's a quality of craftsmanship that's very different between a mass produced product and a handmade product. You can tell it, the difference. In this case, I don't know which one Call of Duty is or which one Pokemon Call is. Call of Duty is the, Call of Duty is the Camry. Okay. Is what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> okay. That's right. what I'm trying to say. So who's the Aston Martin? And not Aston, Pokemon. Not Pokemon. No. And Aston, that that's Zelda or Mario. Exactly. Okay. And Aston Martin would be like Half Life Two. Okay. I or, or even like uh Doom twenty sixteen. Those are Aston Martins. Those are like handcrafted quality higher end products okay you know what i mean whereas you know call of duty it's the same shit every year yeah so what's pokemon is that a nissan uh that's <laughs> see this is where my car knowledge breaks down what's a shitty car yeah, what's a shitty what's car a that shitty th- car? that they really they like mass produce why like why do you keep making this yeah vw rabbit Hyundai. <laughs> Hyundai, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Pokemon. Uh, Kia, okay. Yeah. I'll take that. Kia. I'll take Kia. Kia Sorento or something. Yeah. Take yeah. a really, really shitty Kia. <laughs> My Ford Focus is 11. There okay, you go. we're here. It's a pretty shitty go. cars. Um, all right, well, anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that there's no reason why they can't. I'm glad that they're thinking. I'm glad that they know that that was they're a shitty well game aware, that they released. Yeah. Uh, and again, even Nintendo said, hey, man, that was a shitty game you guys made. Yeah. So hopefully they do something about it. The sales sh- uh, show that they don't really need to do anything about it. No, but I think... So I'm hoping that the big higher-ups at Pokemon don't just take the sales. Yeah. Oh. I I, th- I think uh, there's only uh, so far they can just coast on reputation, though. It's gonna come. Yeah, point. yeah. No, it'll definitely bite them in the ass if they decide to keep making. If the next Pokemon releases. game sucks, yeah, that's it's gonna be a real kick in the pants for them. Because they make another Ford Fiesta, yeah, then uh, we're gonna have some problems. Okay, let's talk about. Hold on, I lost everything. Where is my? There it is. Let's talk about. 8 Bits and Rift, thank you for the 13 months. <laughs> Jackson Artist, thanks for the 4 months. Big Daddy Mayhem, thanks for the 10 months. And Gamer Lady, thanks for the 100 bits. Remember when every game was wanting to be a Halo killer because Halo was so big? Turns out only Halo could kill Halo. And that same thing could happen to Pokemon if they don't get their quality in check. That's true. That's a good point. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, Halo... 
that that was very unfortunate because because yeah. Halo burned the wick on both ends. Yeah, is that the right term for this? Because they not only did they wait too long to release the game, mm-hmm. they also released a shitty game. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I guess that's more of like the double edged sword mm-hmm. type thing. Um, also, like you also feel bad for Halo because they switched over to a new developer because yeah. like Bungie stopped like we're done with Halo but Microsoft's like well we got to keep making Halo games so we'll just make a new studio that only does Halo yeah. and like you know they'll put out a game and it's like yeah this is good but dot 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 down the line and they've done that three times now in so. the in the case of Halo it was very well optimized and run and ran very good and was very pretty it just was a bland game yeah. and it was missing a lot of things that everyone was excited to 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 play yeah. at launch and even now like the the multiplayer is still not very fun yeah so that was just an unfortunate thing uh all right let's talk about red dead redemption again yes the uh take two ceo says that 50 dollars for a 13 year old game is a great value oh good then, then i guess he's right Okay, there's good news if you felt thrown by the $50 price tag for the 13-year-old Red Dead Redemption Switch and PS4 release. Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick says the cost is right. Seriously, IGN reports that Zelnick had his reasons, which he clearly laid out after the company's uh, Q2 earnings report. That's just what we believe is commercially appropriate price for it. Satisfied? <laughs> that's, what she says. that's what they say in the article. Uh, points of frustration around Red Dead Redemption sticker price are extensive, including the lack of multiplayer option and the complete lack of quality updates since its 2010 release. No K, no 4K visuals in sight. There's also the small matter of the game is already available on Xbox Series X in 4K for $40. Uh, Take Two is leaning into the inclusion of Undead Nightmare, a Red Dead Redemption expansion. Uh, in the port as rationale for the higher price, Zelnick called Undead Nightmare a great standalone game in its own right when it was originally released. So we feel uh, it is a great bundle for the first time and certainly a great value for customers. Uh, if the words of the CEO have convinced you to pay $50 for Red Red Redemption, uh, you can buy the digital version for a Switch or PS4 starting August 17th with a physical release to follow on October 13th. So they said that it's a, it's available on Xbox for $40, but they mean with Undead Nightmare, I'm assuming. Uh, we did this last. We did it. It was 30 <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And Undead, well, and Undead Nightmare was 10 Yeah. 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 Uh, we were at the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo this weekend. We were. Uh, I found time. I found Red Dead Redemption for PS3 uh, and uh, the Undead Nightmare expansion pack. It's uh, separate discs. Combined, they were $25. Yeah. <laughs> so no, this this is not a commercially accurate price. <laughs> it is it is uh oh there's my last four digits of my credit card. Good. <laughs> Great. <laughs> awesome. Uh they did show uh what was I saying? I got sidetracked because I got docs. Yeah. There there's Jackson last night asked uh-huh. me if I'm excited to play Red Dead on Switch, and I said no. Yeah. I, first of all, I'm just not going to play it again. Right. No, I'm not going to play it again. Second of all, uh, if I wanted to play it again, I have it on Xbox. Yeah. And it's going to be better on Xbox. Yeah. Shockingly. Because <laughs> you put it in and you're getting 4K60. Yeah. Whereas on Switch, you're just getting 720 bullshit. I mean, you were you were never going to get 4K60 on the Switch. Mm-hmm. But still, $50, even with the Switch tax, mm-hmm. that's a lot for a Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. 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 I don't agree with that price point. I don't agree with Strauss Zelnick, but then again, I am not the CEO of a major video game publisher. So what do I know? Yeah, I don't. I I think that uh, this is just unfortunately where the where the market is. I I don't. I think it should be a little cheaper. It should be at least forty. It should be half of that price. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I didn't put this in the key, but um, they finally put a release date and price for the Arkham Collection on Switch, mm-hmm. uh, October thirteenth. Fifty dollars, the collection for the, the collection. It's three games. It's three games. Yeah, true. I still feel like that's a lot, especially when you consider that I I, I think on Xbox right now you can buy the collection for five dollars. The whole collection. The whole collection. How is that possible? This is on sale. 
holy shit. Yeah. That's a good value. Yeah. I, so PlayStation has it. I'm, I clicked on it. Oh, five, six dollars. Oh, it's on PlayStation. It's yeah. On PlayStation for there you six dollars. There you go. So she's buying on PlayStation for six dollars. Wait, what the fuck? It won't let me load it, but uh, Xbox is sixty. Okay, well that's the re- that's the regular price, right? And it's it is often on sale on Xbox too. All oh, right, PlayStation is so. not loading. Yeah, but you can't play it on Switch. True. You get it for that portability. You, the you Switch play it tax. on your Project Q. Oh my god! It was fifty. It was sixty dollars, and now it is six. Yeah, that's crazy. And you know the problem with the Switch is that things never go on sale digitally, or if they do, they're never like six dollars. This ends in two days. This yeah. deal. So, Red Dead Redemption is priced to sale. They can discount it soon afterwards. Yeah, I mean that's usually how yeah. It goes. I mean I can see them, but again, like if you want to play it on Switch. You know, they don't drop down to like $8 very often Mm -hmm. like they do on other systems. So, you know, you have to like pick your poison there. Okay. Well, I mean, we weren't expecting Take-Two to be like, you know, you're right. We'll sell it for cheaper now. You know, of course, they're going to say this is what the market says that we should sell it for. Mm -hmm. Uh, All right. So. This was labeled as Netflix Gaming Releases Controller. And then I click on it, and that is a phone. (laughs) Uh, Well, that's the controller. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Netflix has announced a move that many have been waiting for for the company to make ever since it started getting into gaming. Game streaming direct to TVs. In a low-key announcement, Xbox's gaming boss, uh, Mike Verdu, said it has begun a limited beta test to a small number of members in the UK and Canada, allowing them to play games, uh, allowing them to play two games on their TV. Support for playing on PC via browsers will follow in the next few weeks. Uh, Rather than support Bluetooth controllers at present, the Netflix cloud gaming service will use a bespoke smartphone app, which has been spotted on the iOS app store late last week. Uh, The app appears to be a simple Virtual stick and button layout on the phone screen with a big, fat A button surrounded by small B, X, and Y buttons similar to Nintendo's GameCube controller. On the PC, mouse keyboard control will be supported. The games playable in the beta test are Oxenfree, the cult narrative adventure game from Night School Studio, which was acquired by Netflix in 2021, and something called um, Mulhue's Mining Adventure. The latter game is a total mystery. Unlike Oxenfree, it's not part of the existing catalog of games that can be played natively on smartphones as part of Netflix's subscription. According to Verdu, it's a gem mining arcade game. Uh, our goal has always been to have a game for everyone, and we are hard. And we are working hard to meet members uh, where they are. Sorry. Our goal has always been to have a game for everyone, and we are working hard to meet members where they are with the with an accessible, smooth, and ubiquitous service. Today, we are taking the first step in making games playable on every device where our members enjoy Netflix, TV, computers, and mobile, Verdu said. This limited beta is meant to test our game streaming technology and controller and to improve the member experience over time. Uh, he adds, taking pains to point out that we're still very early in our game's journey. The tentative nature of the announcement contrasts with Google's uh, noisy but ill-fated push into cloud gaming Stadia, which launched in late 2019 and closed just three years later. Uh, While many expect cloud gaming to be a key part of the future of games, uh, there are many technological and other barriers to its growth and the uptake for rival services like Xbox Cloud Gaming, uh, which is still technically in beta and NVIDIA's GeForce Now has been slow. In that context, Netflix caution in entering the competition to establish what is often called the Netflix for games makes sense. Another challenge for Netflix is that its game catalog, while pretty high quality, has been built around mobile gaming so far, and many of those experiences won't translate well to TV. Uh, it seems to it seems a safe bet to expect its streaming service to focus more on titles where there is a, an existing PC version, like Into the Breach, and less on mobile original games like the wonderful uh, Point P. Nevertheless, Netflix seems serious about its gaming ambitions. It has steadily been both acquiring and funding studios over the last two years and says it has 16 games uh, in development in-house, including a AAA multi-platform game and an original IP led by Bungie veteran and Halo and Destiny co-creator Joseph Stanton. This seems like a money pit for Netflix. 
like uh like they're just throwing money in into it yeah even though it's not really making the money yet i mean yeah. i appreciate it a little bit like uh what they've done with uh mobile games yeah. on ios and android uh has been pretty great and not a lot of people yeah. know about it yeah it's like one of the hidden gems of your netflix subscription is that you can just straight up get shredder's revenge for free on yeah your phone. And, that's a- and and that will support controllers i think yeah you could just straight up use a bluetooth controller to play shredder's revenge on your phone if yeah. you have a netflix subscription yeah i think of all like the because netflix considers themselves a tech company for mm-hmm. some reason and i think of all like the tech companies who like try to get in games don't really understand games google amazon netflix is like the only one that like seems to be you know taking their time with it and trying to figure out like what works, what doesn't, how to make it work for them to service everyone. Yeah. And you know, they start they started smart by just starting with, you know, mobile games on your phone. Now they're slowly testing out the next step, which would be on a television or on a web browser. Yeah. I do think the controller app on your phone is a good idea. But they've got to implement proper controller support oh, soon yeah. if they want Absolutely. this to take off. Yeah, you're not going to be playing uh, Shredder's Revenge <laughs> like yeah. with, with a phone controller. Absolutely Oxen not. Free, maybe. Maybe. Uh, I do like that they're developing their own stuff. So it, it's this is because Netflix has made too much money mm-hmm. and they ha- they've reached their limit of people that they could sell Netflix to. Yeah. So that's why they're making it so you can't share Netflix anymore. Right. Well... You say they've reached their limit, but it actually came out that once they implemented that, like pay to add other people, people just bought their own Netflix subscription. Right. right. So like they they are seeing an increase in subscribers through that. Yeah. So they, they found ways to continue to grow the business. Yeah. As shitty as they are. But now what? What's yeah. the next step? Cause, right. Because this is a capitalist society. These big yeah, it's not about billion dollar companies need to It's about infinite growth. Yeah, yeah. They need to always be growing. So mm-hmm. the only other way they can grow is to move outside of streaming movies yeah. and TV shows. And there are streaming platforms, so they gotta do something with streaming. Mm-hmm. So video games. And I think that kind of makes sense because mm-hmm. every time we he, we talk about streaming platforms, we say this is the Netflix of video games. Exactly. Game Pass is the Netflix of mm-hmm. video games. You know? So And maybe Netflix can finally be the Netflix for video games. Yeah. You know, if they are going to start doing TV games, great. But I think when people think of like TV games, they're going to think of like your Call of Duties, your Elder Scrolls, your Fallouts. They're going to think of like the big AAA games. So slowly but surely, they're going to have to start any games like that to their service, which might, which, you know, might be a bit too much for them, honestly. Streaming a game like Call of Duty instead of streaming a game like Oxenfree or Shredder's Revenge is a completely different beast. Yeah, they'd have to change the infrastructure a little mm-hmm. bit. I think they could definitely do it. They definitely have a, a vast knowledge of streaming. Yeah, I don't think the current streaming infrastructure can support uh, high fidelity games or right. high reaction time yeah. games because I think that Netflix has been trying their best to... Um, lower the bit rate as much as possible yeah. like like how can i send 4k with the lowest overhead possible uh and i'm not sure if that current infrastructure that they've built is going to be acceptable for playing you know m- multiplayer online games where you need a quick reaction time yeah but they could get there yeah. they have people that work there that know what they're doing mm-hmm. with in regards to that so i mean they are the only streaming platform that makes a profit true so I am not opposed to game streaming. I think there's a place for it. Uh, I think that eventually, I don't know how long it will take, but I think that most people are going to be streaming stuff. It's just going to take a really long time to get there. Yeah. I, I don't see it, but I feel like games are different enough where that most people will still want to have the game stored locally on their hard drive. I think we will. And a lot of people watching will. But right. most people are the mainstream who don't know any better. True. And I think that streaming will hit a point where it's not noticeable to them. Right. But will that be within this console generation? No. No. I think that streaming is great right now. But right. there's a place for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually in the future, I think that streaming will be what most people end up doing. 
Also, but th- that also means we need to change some shit here in America with our internet yes. infrastructure. Our yeah, internet absolutely. infrastructure is, is god awful. It is embarrassingly bad. Yeah. Anyway, as I'm being served ads for FiOS two gig internet right now. Speaking of streaming, whenever I do Game Pass or anything, I always do Forza. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, for I mean that's a good game to test stuff with. It's, it's good. It's streaming on game pass you can also download it from game pass mm-hmm. it's it's a very fast paced game uh and it's graphically very pretty yes so it's very easy to tell how good the streaming quality is yes uh but speaking of forza forza motorsport will be missing three fan favorite features at launch because microsoft has learned nothing from <laughs> halo infinite i'm very curious what fan favorite features are there in forza uh forza motorsport the next entry in the xbox console exclusive racing franchise will be missing three features at launch spectator mode in featured multiplayer ai racing in featured multiplayer and split screen uh prior to the 2023 forza motorsports game the popular racing franchise had a new entry every two years with most of its games uh, entering quite a bit of critical acclaim and proving popular with fans. The first Forza launched in 2005 on the original Xbox and quickly became one of the highest rated racing games of all time. The sequel dropped a couple of years later and earned similar acclaim as did 20, 2009's Forza 3 and 2011's Forza 4. 2013's Forza 5 was the franchise's first miss. The Xbox One launch title was released with significantly less content than its predecessors, uh, leading uh, many to accuse Microsoft of rushing the game's development to meet the Xbox One's launch date. Luckily, Forza fi- uh, 6 and 7 got back on track, though they still didn't reach the same highs as the first four titles. While there was only two years between the release of the first seven Forza games, it's officially been six years since Forza Motorsport 7 hit the scene. This puts even more pressure on the new Forza to deliver, and it will be interesting to see if it's able to bring the franchise back to its former glory if it will fall, fall short of expectations. Unfortunately, the fact that the game will be missing spectator mode in multiplayer, AI racing in featured multiplayer, and split screen doesn't bode well. Longtime fans who enjoyed these features will be disappointed to see that they'll have that they'll all be left on the cutting room floor when the new Forza arrives on October 10th. Uh, it's worth pointing out that Forza Motorsports developer uh, delivering this bad news repeat, uh, repeatedly said that those fan features won't be in the new racing game at launch. This certainly leaves room open for uh, the possibility for the developer to patch these in at some point in the future, um, but fans will have to wait and see on that front. Many will recall when Microsoft promised to patch in split screen for Halo Infinite after its launch, only for the feature to be scrapped. It may be uh, maybe best for split screen enthusiasts to keep their expectations in check. The lack of these features is definitely disappointing, but Forza Motorsport could still be an exceptional racing game without them. Uh, Forza's graphics are stunning, and it's packed with cars, game modes, and other content to keep racing uh, game fans busy for a long time. Uh, plus, anyone not wanting to pay full price for it after launch, uh, anyone not wanting to pay full price after finding out it's going to be missing all these features, can still just play it entirely on Game Pass. So what the hell's AI multiplayer in featured AI racing in featured multiplayer? I think what that, does that mean? That so when I hear that, I think that means that it's going to have computer controlled cars in addition to the player controlled cars. Right. I mean that just sounds like like a standard racing game feature. Right. Period. Yeah. That that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. They, they already have the AI in the single player. Yeah. So where's so why why is that not being implemented in multiplayer? Very strange. Yeah. Uh, spectator mode. That's a weird one. I don't know why companies have been leaving that out. That's like such an important thing. Yeah. Um, especially if you're gonna have like tournaments and stuff. Like like you want that. You want to yeah. have events where people play the game, and it's it's very necessary to to have a way to view the game that's being played. Yeah. Um, and split screen. I get why they leave it out, but I'm sick of people leaving it out. Yeah. It, it, it's, you got to be able to figure this shit out yeah. these days. It's, it's ridiculous that like, cause not having split screen multiplayer of any kind is like the easiest way to say, like, if you want to play with a buddy, your buddy's got to buy the game. So you got to buy two copies of the game. Yeah. Like that's always what that signifies. I mean, to be honest, that's how kids play now that they, 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 they oh, yeah, you want to, 
come over and play Fortnite? No, I'll play it at home. Yeah. Why would I go to your house? You know? But it's just, it, it seems like, I mean, it's difficult because the game's got to render twice. Yeah. You know? It's got to render two different environments. True. You know? But I know in the past, like, when they do split-screen multiplayer, they run the game at a lower resolution so yeah. that both games can fit. I was going to say, yeah. the, the, the two instances that it is rendering are at two different resolutions, yeah. two smaller resolutions. Uh, here's a quote from one of the Turn 10 developers. Spectator mode and AI competitors won't be included as it doesn't fit the rules of featured multiplayer. Uh, having players come into featured multiplayer event and taking player slots and then spectating it's not really the racing that we had intended. Similarly, racing with AI and featured multiplayer with all the potential impacts on your safety rating uh, also didn't make a whole lot of sense to have. Don't, don't sit- let them don't let them sit there and sp- don't let them spectate. The- oh, have a limited amount of spectators. Yeah. Have them not count for the game. Give them the lowest amount of bandwidth possible because they don't need to, you know, have a quick yeah. reaction time or anything. Uh, what's the problem since we're on the topic of some legacy features that aren't in launch uh, our heavy investment in pushing new graphical features and our complete overhaul of the rendering engine unfortunately made split screen really difficult to implement and it's also not going to be in launch the the split screen I understand yeah I understand it sucks and it's there's potential they just never make split screen kind of like what they did with with halo yeah um and the AI, I don't get either. Yeah, that, that didn't really explain much about AI. No, either. it didn't. AI uh, and the multiplayer. Split screen is a great way to introduce games to friends. They're losing potential players, says Asteroid. Yeah, no, you're right. Featured uh, multiplayer sounds like some tournament or special stuff, right? Like not normal multiplayer. No, I don't know. It sounds I mean, like I'm not as well versed me. in Forza Motorsport as I am like other. I'm assuming like feature, feature multiplayer specifically does sound like it's a special kind of multiplayer but by the same token like i don't understand why you wouldn't want to have like ai racers in there along with the other human racers because that gives you a full lineup of cars to try to avoid to me it just sounds like a fancy way to say multiplayer yeah like the full featured multiplayer Mm -hmm. i haven't played forza multiplayer since uh the xbox 360 what do we have forza 2 maybe we had two and three well, it came with it the It came Xbox. with two. That's what. That's the yeah. only one I played then. Um, f- I played online multiplayer in Forza 2. I liked that game a lot. Right. Um, I noticed that sometimes I would play the game to race people. Sometimes I would get absolutely annihilated by these people. Yeah. Uh, but you can take your... You can, like, build a car. You can, like, unlock stuff in the game, build a car, and then take that online. Yeah. And... A lot of times, you would enter a lobby, you'd start racing, and then the other guys would be like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. And they're all the way at the starting line. People would start the games just to look at each other's cars. Yeah. And they'd, they'd kind of like drive really slow. And be like, hey, man, that's cool. What'd you do? Uh, and that was du- that's dumb. I yeah. hate that. That should be a mode. There yeah. should be a mode, come look at my car. Yeah. Uh, Brashen said... Uh, they googled it it's a time bound weekend event like F1 races with specific dates and times and uh, qualifiers featured multiplayer is yeah that? that's what featured multiplayer is so it's a time bound weekend event like it, it's like the Splatoon Splat Fest essentially they're like special event multiplayers okay so St- I mean, so that means it's even worse that spectator mode isn't included because people would definitely want to watch that. Okay, so the spectator mode will be available in multiplayer, just not just the not special this... multiplayer. Right, but if okay. it's a featured event, like people are going to want to watch that. Mm-hmm. So spectator mode would make more sense in there. And I still think AI multiplayer uh, AI bots in there could be good, or could be a good feature to have in uh, featured multiplayer. Yeah, I'm not sure where AI. Well, where yeah, where does AI play in? In that, in like a tournament mode. Yeah. I mean, what do you use the AI for in that case? I mean, if you think about it, it'd just be like more hazards. Okay. You know? Uh, split screen. Oh, it's split screen. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm not as upset anymore if it's only in one game mode. Right. 
But it sounds like it's a game mode that could have benefited from those features. Yeah, from multiplayer. Yeah, I'm from uh from spectator mode. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, let's look at Snoopy accessories. Hey, I, we pretty much just put this in for our dad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, because he's gonna ask for this. Uh, Who's making it? Uh, who is making it? Official Japanese Snoopy website. There you go. Oh, so it's a it's legit. Yeah, yeah it's just Snoopy. straight up. Yeah. <laughs> Snoopy's got some wacky merch in Japan. Yeah. Two new controllers and cases are launching in Japan on August 10th, so already available. Uh wireless controller costs about uh 6,490 yen, which is about 45 bucks US, while the pouches are about uh 2,178 yen or about 15 bucks. I mean, look, they're nice. They're nice designs. They're, nice. they're yeah, they're cute. I do want to go to a Snoopy store when I go to Japan. Mhm. Mm Maybe. You pick these up. And maybe I'll pick these up. Uh, Asteroid Blues, thank you for the Prime subscription. Uh, Assassin's Creed is coming out one week early. Yes. Let me get that article up. Gone Gold. What does that mean? Gone Gold? Oh, it's Gone Gold. Yes. Uh, the tweet says, Assassin's Creed Mirage has gone gold and is coming out a week early. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of the entire team, we can't wait for you to explore 9th century Baghdad with Basim. Your journey now starts on October 5th. Save the new date. That's, uh, that's nice news. Especially, you know, it's Ubisoft. They've been having a lot of problems. Behind the scenes, no no word on uh, the Sands of Time remake. Skull and Bones uh, gets delayed every two minutes. So the fact that they, they are putting out a new Assassin's Creed game uh, that's in the old style, back when it was good, uh, and it got finished early, so they released it early. That's just that's nice. Ubisoft did a nice thing. I don't know. <laughs> like, why? Like, what? You're you're suspicious. You're like, what's the right? Yeah, angle? yeah. Something's weird about that. Like, take the time to make the game. Why not? I'm, I'm if it's in... already coming out, if you already have the date and you're ahead of time, like, take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the beach. Why rush it? I mean, maybe they are. Maybe they're maybe they're going to release it early so that everyone could take that week off and they go right back to patching it. Yeah, they're going to have to make yeah. patches and DLCs and stuff. That's why it doesn't make any sense to me why they would do that. I don't know. I thought that was good a good thing. I mean, I it's better I'm than wrong. being delayed, yeah. but but something doesn't feel right about that. It's also possible that it comes out a week early and it still sucks. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Xenoblade Chronicles 3 released a month ahead of... Uh, a month or two ahead of schedule. Yeah, that was because of Final Fantasy or something. They didn't want to overlap with another JRPG. There was another JRPG that was releasing like the exact same right. time, and they moved it because of that. It's possible Red Dead, I, wh whatever this game is, Assassin's Creed also didn't want to yeah. overlap with a with a different game. Uh, let me just check something here because October thirteenth, like a lot of games are coming out that day. Like that's when the Arkham Collection comes out. That's when um, I think Spider Man Two comes out. That's when. Oh, I think isn't that when Super Mario Wonder comes out? Is it? it, it if it's the day that S Spider Man Two comes out, that's reason enough to change the date. That's also Comic Con. Oh, I'm gonna have to be a Comic Con instead of playing. Oh, Spider -Man. I have to uh, apply. I haven't done that for us and our dad wants and our to dad. come. I love this. You come Google to Comic Con to see our dad. What? Oh no, uh, Spider Man Two is October twentieth. Never mind. Okay. So then what's coming out that day? Uh, October 13th video game releases. Uh, well, it was Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now it's Lords of Fallen. A Super Mario Wonder is October 20th, the same day as Spider-Man. Okay. You know what I'm playing. Yeah. Here we go. 13th and 14th, smorgasbord of video game releases. Uh... Nobody cares about these games. <laughs> <laughs> now I sound like an idiot. Beat 'em ups in the chat. Hey, what? says it's my birthday on the tenth of October. Maybe they didn't want to clash with all the hype. I I can see that. Yeah, I I, I I can also see what just calling up every single game developer be like. Do not 
release anything Don't ruin my on my birthday. birthday. It's my day. <laughs> Crikey. <laughs> That's a good wood impression. <laughs> uh, aren't you streaming? <laughs> Get Are you here. streaming our podcast? Get out of here. Uh, all right. THQ Nordic uh, is doing a cool Ninja Turtle thing. Earlier this year, Paramount released that a video game based on the Ninja Turtles graphic novel, The Last Ronin, was in development. While we haven't heard much since then, today, THQ Nordic just decided to release the trailer for it. What This concept art looks awesome. Is that real? That is. Yeah, that's the real concept art. For the game. I haven't Unfortunately, seen we did not get any look at official gameplay or information. In the last Ronin graphic novel storyline, the final surviving Ninja Turtles on a quest uh, for revenge in New York. Uh, both the trailer and the new synopsis point towards this being the case for the game as well. Who is the last Ronin? In a future battle ravaged New York City, a lone turtle uh, embarks on a seemingly hopeless mission to seek justice for the family he lost from the minds of the creators of the Ninja Turtles. Uh, and based on the best selling comic book by Eastman, Waltz, Bishop, uh, Delgado, and the Escorza Brothers uh, official video game adaptation of TMNT The Last Ronin. This is crazy because, like, earlier this year, uh, the one of the VPs at Paramount just basically said, we're working on it. We, we want to make a Ninja Turtles game based on The Last Ronin in, like, a God of War style. And that's all he said. And now, cut to a few months later, and THQ's like, yo, guess what? <laughs> guess what we're doing? So here is the concept, though. Yeah, it's at the end of the trailer. Uh, currently does not have a release window, but it is slated for PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. Uh, and I believe it is being made. It's Who is developing this? It's developed by one of THQ Nordic's uh, in-house studios. I want to play this. Should I read the comic first? I've only read the first issue. Uh, I mean, the comic is very good. Yeah, yeah. I, I I am very interested in. The I story did notice this. because I did read the comic because I'm a nerd. Mm -hmm. Um, the trailer actually does hint at how the other three turtles die. Mm -hmm. So it does look like it's going to follow the comic pretty closely. Okay. So, so I don't know. I don't know if I want to read it first. Uh, Black Forest Games. What have they done? <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid this game's not going to be good. <laughs> I'm gonna, it's going to sully the the story, the great story of yeah. Last Ronin. Uh, Black Forest Games. Oh, they did the recent Destroy All Humans uh, re-releases. Great. All right, now I'm worried. <laughs> Jeffrey Sorensen says, you have to play Metroid Dread first. Right, right, right. Of course. You got to play FIFA 98. Okay, now you, you're making the list too long. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, that will hopefully be good. It'll be it'll just be interesting to get a Ninja Turtles game that's not a side scrolling brawler. Yeah. Uh yeah. I, I I would appreciate like a like a Sekiro type Ninja Turtles game. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not as difficult, but Yeah. You know. I mean they compared it to God of War. Yeah. That's which, you know, similar. I'll take yeah. I'll I'll take that too. Um all right, next, Xbox introduces enforcement strike system. What We're constantly mean? improving our safety measures and bringing more systems and tools in place to empower players to respectfully interact with one another because everyone deserves a place to comfortably be themselves online, free from harassment or bullying. One of the most common questions we get from players through feedback, posts, and appeals is how to repeat, is how repeated enforcements impact their gameplay and how they escalate and uh, what they escalate to. Uh, to help address this, we're introducing a new enforcement strike system. This new system attaches strikes to every enforcement ranging in severity based on inappropriate activity. Players will now have a view of their enforcement history, including strikes and overall impact these have on their player record. Oh, this God. revised system uh, gives players a better understanding of enforcement severity and the cumulative effect of multiple enforcements. Enforcement transparency is, a, is about giving players clarity into how their behavior impacts their experience. Our content moderation efforts are not changing as a result of this new enforcement strike system. As always, when a player believes they have witnessed a violation of Xbox's community standards, we encourage them to report. All reports are evaluated. There are no automated enforcement actions based solely on the fact that a report was made. No volume of inaccurate reports uh, results in enforcement. Only reports that have been reviewed by the Xbox safety team and determined to be accurate results in the enforcement. With the new system, enforcements also include a strike based on severity of their actions. This is the big one. 
The system is similar to demerit strikes used in a driver's license system in many oh countries. Good Lord. For example, a player that has received two strikes will be suspended from the platform for a day, whereas players who receive four strikes will be suspended for seven days. Players have players have a total of eight strikes, and once reached, uh, will be suspended from Xbox's social features like messaging, parties, party chat, multiplayer, and others for one year from the enforcement date. <laughs> Hell all, yeah, brother. All strikes receive all strikes received stay on a player's record for 6 months. Today, players will begin with a blank slate or zero strikes. Any previous enforcements such as suspensions must be completed. New enforcements as of today will result in strikes. With these changes, Xbox is evolving uh enforcement to focus on protecting players. This is why even suspended accounts remain functional for single-player experiences and players do not lose access to purchase content. However, for the most serious violations, including illegal activity, Xbox retains the ability to permanently suspend all functionality of an account, including access to purchases. So it's the example they have here. The guy's got one strike and it says profanity, one strike. Yeah. Eligible for an appeal. Uh, and then... One day suspension, one day for one strike. Uh, yeah, what is profanity? Can I say fuck? Probably. I, I'd hope so. I'd I, like some clarification on that. I feel like profanity is like if you if you start swearing in like Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. <laughs> okay. Like that's where that comes in. If you're swearing in like Halo or Street Fighter, you know, not so much. Okay. Cheating is also one of them. So profanity, cheating, sexually inappropriate. That's plus two. It's two strikes. Yeah. Harassment or bullying and hate speech. Hate speech is three. Get fucked. Yeah. Profanity. I need more clarification on that. Because because if profanity is different than hate speech. Well, yeah, obviously. I, I need to know. I need to know. I mean, like, I if, if you're playing Call of Duty... Yeah, and you and you. Get, There's a lot of yeah profanity in Call of Duty. Well, if you're playing Call of Duty, let's say, and you get killed, mm -hmm. and you're upset about it, and you and you you know you do some swearing, I don't think anybody playing Call of Duty with you is going to report you. Right. Yeah. Again, if you're playing a game that skews a bit younger, like if you are playing Nickelodeon All Stars, uh -huh. and uh, you get your ass beat by SpongeBob, and you let out a fuck shit. Then yeah, somebody's gonna report you for that because you're swearing in a game with kids. <laughs> okay. In Call of Duty specifically, when you die, your mic turns on. So there's a lot of I I feel like a majority of the comms in Call yeah. of Duty is people going ah fuck. Yeah. Heads up, Will's cam is doing a Dutch angle. Yeah, what do you want me to do? It's, that's just what it is. It's 60s Batman day, baby. It, looks, it doesn't even, it looks normal. It doesn't even look like a, like it's on an angle. Oh, and I got to start talking. I got to see what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, yeah. Hello, citizen. This is my bad Adam West impression. That looks fine. Yeah. Um, You can check my browser history. You can see my recent messages. Do not check my Xbox strike record. <laughs> Imagine like, you know, people start putting that in their Tinder profile. Two I, strikes on Xbox. I mean, that's the thing is everybody talks about how uh, Xbox Live back in like 2008 was like hell on earth. It was. You know? All right. It was great. You kids these days don't know what it's like. Embracer Group almost bought. No, Embracer Group was almost purchased by Saudis. I might have just like, I might have like fudged that a little bit. I think it was just like an investment from the Saudis, oh, okay. but it was like $2 billion the Saudis mm -hmm. were going to give Embracer Group. Embracer Group is currently undergoing a major internal reorganization after apparently overextending with hardworking employees bearing the cost of its ensuing layoffs and closures. This restructuring has already begun, but a new report has shed light uh, further on how the situation came about. Axios reports, citing four sources familiar with the deal, that the Swedish uh, holding company's mystery partner, the one that walked away from a deal worth $2 billion after seven months of negotiation, was none other than Savvy Games. A, ver a verbal agreement uh, was in place, and this reversal caused Embracer's share to plummet 40% in response. Yo. The Savvy Games Group is a... The Savvy Games Group is chaired by Prince Mohammed bin Salam, 
uh, the millennial crown prince and prime minister of Saudi Arabia and the state funded investment group is itself snapping up developers at it at an astonishing rate. Uh, Mohammed bin Salam or, or MBS, as he prefers, uh, is a controversial figure whose plans for the future include using the vast capital Saudi Arabia's sovereign wealth fund or public investment fund to invest billions into, among other things, acquiring video game companies. Embracer declined at the time to confirm the identity of its potential partner. Axios adds that uh, its sources were less certain about why Savvy walked away and also that piece of the puzzle still eludes us. So... Embracer Group, you know, the Swedish company that owns like everything, a lot of video game studios, shockingly, THQ Nordic, uh, Tomb Raider nowadays. Um, this came out a while back. They were waiting uh, for a deal to close that was going to be worth a lot of money. And that deal just did not happen. And Embracer Group lost a lot of money because of it, had to restructure everything and start laying. Yeah, there was a big yeah problem. They were like shedding companies. Turned out it was the Saudis. <laughs> okay. Who like we're going to invest two billion dollars into the company and then at the last minute we're like no. So, what are the biggest uh, games holding companies? We got Tencent, which is Tencent, the Embracer Group. Those are like the two that come to mind. Because like the holding companies are like just big conglomerates that happen to own a lot of game companies. Mm -hmm. It's not like the way we think of like an EA or an Activision or uh, even a Nintendo or a Microsoft. You know. So I don't know, like I don't know of any other like company that just owns a lot of video game studios, you know? Yeah, when you look up like biggest video game uh, companies, you get like Sony, Microsoft, Tencent comes up, but yeah. there's a lot of holding companies like Vivendi. Yeah, Vivendi's another one. Uh, do they still own stuff? Uh, didn't they they, didn't... they tried to buy Ubisoft, yeah. but that didn't wor work. Uh, NetEase. NetEase, yeah, they're another one. Yeah, I feel like people are often leaving out Embracer Group. Oh, yeah. no, there it is. Embracer Group, number 35 by wow. mar by market cap. So you have the usual... Number one is Microsoft, which makes sense. The yeah. Tencent is number two. Sony's number three. Activision Blizzard is number four, which is why there's been so much controversy over yeah. this merger. <laughs> Uh, NetEase, I think, is a holding company. Yeah, right? they, they, I think so. Um, Nintendo is number six. Uh, let's scroll down more. Roblox is number ten. Damn. Aristocrat, I've never heard of that. Nexon, I have heard of that. Uh, Entain, I don't know what that is. Thirty Seven Interactive Entertainment, don't know what that is. Thirty Seven Interactive. <laughs> oh wait, no, no, I don't know what that is. But all the way down at 35 is Embracer Group. I don't see Vivendi on here anymore. Well, I don't think Vivendi like really works in games anymore. Okay. They just wanted Ubisoft. Yeah. All right. So last news is uh, Destiny 2 replaces Lance Reddick as v Zavala with Keith David. I don't know who Keith David is. Uh, you, you would if you heard his voice. Uh, Bungie has announced that Keith David will take over the role of Commander Zavala in Destiny 2, uh, who was previously vo by, voiced by the late uh, Lance Reddick. David is well known for his acting roles both in and out of the video games uh, and previously worked with Bungie uh, back when they were still making the Halo series. And the same announcement, Bungie revealed that players would still be hearing Reddick's in-game uh, uh, talk, uh, given that his dialogue uh, has already been recorded and won't be touched. But beyond that, David will be uh, voicing the character in future, ex future expansions. Zavala was a key Destiny 2 character even prior to Reddick's death. And after his passing, players would gather around Zavala in-game to pay tribute to the actor. Players did wonder, however, what would become of the character since his presumable since he'd presumably uh, still be featured in a later DLC. And Bungie said it's announced today that it plans to continue uh, the character story with Keith David's voice. They killed off um, Cade Six, who was like another. He was like a similar character. But isn't he coming well. back now? He did come back. Yeah. He did come back. Uh, even if you don't know David by name, many have most certainly heard his voice in one project or another. Uh, in the gaming space, he is known as the voice of the Arbiter in Halo, 
Uh, and he's also oh. played characters in Mass Effect, Dark Side Genesis, Saints Row 4. He plays himself in Saints Row 4. <laughs> uh, Marvel Heroes, Call of Duty, Marvel Warfare 2, and more. He is the voice of Goliath on Disney's Gargoyles. Uh, he is uh, the Shadow Man on The Princess and the Frog. My daughter's current favorite movie, by the way. <laughs> um, and he's the voice of Spawn in numerous animated series and his appearance in Mortal Kombat 11. He's, he's, he's Sergeant Foley in Call of Duty. I'm he's the guy who... Private Allen, go over there. That guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely heard him before. Yes. Uh, if you're familiar with the movie They Live, where Rowdy Rowdy Piper beats up a guy in a parking lot for 20 minutes, he is that guy. <laughs> okay. He is that guy Rowdy Rowdy Piper beats up. Keith David is great. He is, I'm sure he'll be good. He is awesome in everything he does. This It's exciting. Um, my wife and I are watching the new season of Justified, and he's in the first episode. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Keith David. And then he dies. I'm like, no, Keith David. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh okay that's fine I'm the uh, I mean I'll be playing Destiny when the next one comes out right I don't know how much of this new DLC I'll be jumping onto though all right that's it that's all we got uh I still know what to do about the tweet of the week because because uh, it's not called tweet of the week anymore nope. and I kind of just hate it now yeah. today I went to I went to click on tweet deck maybe I could show you what it looks like I click on my tweet deck. Yep, here it is. I click on my tweet deck and it says subscribe. You can't you can't tweet deck anymore. No. So no. I will be using Twitter significantly less. Yeah. Not not cool. You wanna see what this is? I got some things oh, yeah. from Tom Talk here. Oh. Ooh. There's two boxes for some reason. Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise cross Tom Talk. I don't know exactly what it is. <laughs> Crossover you didn't know you needed. Ooh, that's a cool box, though. Yeah. Man. Oh, wow, you suck. Just threw it on the floor. You got to do it on both sides. Yeah. Tom Talk has been sending me a lot of stuff because I've talked about them. I mean, they times. do they do make nice stuff. Oh, it says it on the back. Sling bag. Oh, a sli Ooh. I got a lot of sling Ooh. bags. This looks nice. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Nice, bro. Hell yeah. Monster Hunter Rise sling bag. That's that Kawaii a... Desne. It's for a Switch, right? Uh, It might be for a Steam Deck. Oh. Let's see. It's most likely a Switch, but it's possible it's for Steam. It's Monster Hunter Rise on Steam? Yes. Oh. Shows how much I know. And it runs great. I mean, we got a Steam Deck here. Put it in. See if it fits. Right. I don't I don't think this will fit. I'm surprised it doesn't say on the box. Nope, that is a Switch. That is for a Switch. Okay. You want one? Which one do you want? I don't care. I'm going um, I'm good. I'm, I'm almost forty. I can't walk around with something like that. I do use their sling bag for the switch. I do have a Steam Deck one though. I gotta, I gotta use that. I, yeah. It's bigger. I'd, I'd much rather be using that. Like, like when we went to the Long Island Retro Game Expo, I used basically this, mm -hmm. but it's all black, and it, uh, it, yeah, it's this size, pretty much. But uh, I need a, I need a, to use the Steam Deck one. Anyway. That's it. Now we'll talk to you people. Yes. Starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, we got, hey, yo, it's Nigel Gaming. Uh, they stopped using source material in the MCU to avoid paying royalties to previous creators. Disney only recently took over writing in Marvel books. The correlations will start soon, but will be loosely related to avoid paying writers. Example, Ms. Marvel, now a mutant in the comics. I feel like that's not entirely correct. I feel like that is uh, I feel like speculation. That, that's taking yeah. bits and pieces of things and creating a... Marvel has like notoriously been bad about paying their writers for like stuff they use in the movies. I don't think that's changed. I just think people are now more aware of the situation. So regardless of that news getting out, I don't think that's going to affect how they do business. Kevin Feige, like having more of a hand in like what happens in the comics, I don't necessarily think is going to change what happens in the comics. 
because I don't think Kevin Feige, not that he doesn't care about comics, but he's too focused on making the movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Ms. Marvel being a mutant now, I mean, she was an inhuman originally, I think only because they were really trying to make inhumans a thing. And nobody cared about the inhumans no matter how much they tried. They don't even like bring up the fact that she's an inhuman 90% of the time. So making her a mutant just like makes more sense, honestly. Mm-hmm. I just think, you know, they're in, Marvel's just in a really weird state in terms of, like, the MCU. Like, they had the the best 10 years of any movie studio ever, and now they just don't know what to do with themselves. Gaming Memories Pod says, Someone messaged and said, You guys talked about me in this pod. Thanks. Did we? Also, you should try playing Mega Man Legends at 100 to- Oh, we did! Yes! <laughs> You're that guy. Try playing at 125%. You just might realize it's the goddamn truth. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll give it a whirl. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Fenn says, Am I the only one with the Pokemon Go announcement who thought at the start of the trailer that they were going to announce some shoes or new fashion lines? Stranger things have happened. I didn't watch the event. I only saw it afterwards, so I knew it was a Pokemon Go trailer because it said in the title, Pokemon Go trailer. I mean, they've had like weird fashion crossovers before, so it would have made sense to have another one here. Mm -hmm. Surprised they didn't go through with it. Optimistic Miserablist says, I want achievements for Switch, mostly so I can compare my progress with my friends and see what which games they have completed slash spent the most time on. It's just a more detailed way to compare and track progress with friends. I yeah. don't... See, I don't know if I agree with that. Okay. Because, like, there's different kinds of achievements, and if you're... If the, if the game doesn't track, give you achievements for, like, getting to a certain point in the game, then, like... You're not really tracking progress. You're just tracking different activities you can do in the game. You know, if, if a game says defeat 50 enemies using uh, one move, you know, it'll track your progress on that achievement, mm-hmm. but not necessarily where you are in the game as a whole. Okay. You know? Yeah. So no, I, don't I, know, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, I mean... It depends on the game, I guess, but a yeah. lot of games will have a linear set of achievements. Like if you hit these, they'll give you an achievement for just story beats, you know, and like right. that's but how you a track lot of the games progress. Are been have been doing that less and less. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I I mean, right now the only way to track to track how where your friends are at in the same game is to see how much how long they've played it. Yeah. So I see where he's coming from, get, having like a gamer score. Like this is my gamer <laughs> score. I mean, in. Xbox probably does it the best. for like. You know, when you compare, like, what achievements you have with a friend. And it also gives you, like, a bar of, like, how much more you have to go to get that achievement. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I think it's more about, like, where you are in relation to that achievement rather than where you are in the game. Right. Nero, Vin, you guys got some names. <laughs> Just ports and remasters are fine with me. Devs should focus on making their older games accessible instead of wasting resources on remaking older games with the same premise over and over again. Final Fantasy VII Remake is fine, but The Last of Us Part One is pointless. Besides, making older games accessible again will discourage piracy. It certainly will. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty much with you on that. Yeah. I think, like, again, a remake is really only a good idea if you, you can do something new with the concept, like Final Fantasy VII, like Resident Evil 2, um, or if, you know, the source code is unavailable, like... Uh, Silent Hill 2, mm-hmm. in a way. Uh, f- otherwise, nine times out of ten, having the original game available is the way to go. Because otherwise, you're you're just making a new game. Yeah, and it takes nothing. It takes nothing for you to make the new game available. Yeah. I mean, the old game sometimes you need to do a little bit of development. But, yeah. Uh, a lot of the times, these companies just aren't willing to, to, to let it go for some reason. Right. Like, in a lot of cases, like what's what's stopping uh, like a, ga- a company like Sega from releasing a Game Boy, an old Game Boy Advance game yeah. that they have? Like, you need a Game Boy Advance emulator. Yeah, the tools are available. Yeah. You know, we've had that for years. But then the case of Red Dead Redemption, like that shit is just on Xbox. Like it's yeah. an old Xbox <laughs> game. Just fucking put it out. And it's you know that's still not on PC for some reason. 
Yeah, that seems like the easiest thing. Yeah. You just put it on PC. All right, now we're in the chat. Hello. Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody. Will, were you, where were you at the Long Island Retro? I was there. He was there. I was walking around. Did you not see the hat? I was wearing the hat. <laughs> Unless the old game had shitty mechanics and UI. No. I want games preserved as they were. I don't mind fixes, but I also want how it was. I want the option yeah. to play the shitty yeah. version I think too. something like the Metroid Prime Remaster where it, like it gives you better controls, but also has the old controls available. That's a good option yeah. to have. Yeah. Um, I mean, a better UI, you know, if the original UI was bad, you need a better UI, but... Yeah, but again, I like... Because I like to be able to say, hey, this UI sucks. Yeah. You know, I want to be able to say, like, this is what the UI looked like back in the day. Yeah. I don't want a Mario 64 with all bugs patched. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I get that. Yeah, because, like, a lot of the bugs and stuff was part of a game's charm. Yeah, like, like uh, yeah, and I want to be able to, like, do some cool speedrun tricks, yeah. you know, that, that got patched out and stuff. But we do need a fucking camera. We need Mario 64 with the camera. Yeah. Uh, Bob, did you see the recent controversy between Gamers Nexus and Linus Tech Tips? No, I did not. It is crazy uh, right that. now. Also, apparently, Baldur's Gate 3 has controversy, but it's because the game is so good, it scares devs. That's yeah, what we, I was talking about, talked about Yeah. That. Uh, What's the Gamers Nexus? So, Gamers Nexus did an hour-long video that I sat through and watched. <laughs> oh, no. Um, about Linus Tech Tips... Um, they're testing how the, their testing is significantly flawed because they'll they'll put out information that is false and they won't correct it until much later and they've admitted this like hap- Linus has admitted this happens sometimes because they put out so much content they can't go back and fix it yeah and, and they have sponsors you can't just delete the yeah. video you know and also too there's like ethical concerns cuz like there was a prototype um, the big one was there was a prototype cooler that they were testing and they didn't use it with the right GPU. And they said that the cooler was crap because they used it with the wrong GPU. And then they sold the, the GPU prototype at an auction. Oh. They didn't give it back to the creator. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, look, he goes into, I was watching it while I was falling asleep. So Last maybe I like- wasn't the maybe I'm not the best like person to like recount this, but th- he did bring up some interesting points about you know the nature of having to release a video like every day, yeah, and like at the speed at which they do it, there's not time for like corrections and te- yeah. proper testing and stuff. And I think a, a YouTube channel as big as Linus Tech Tips really should be putting more time and focus into doing accurate more accurate testing and reviews than they have been so that's interesting because they have an entire company now that yeah. just tests stuff yeah so i'd imagine that they have a pretty high standard for what they what they put out yeah um the last time i saw gamers nexus was them shitting all over new egg and they were absolutely right about right about new egg <laughs> yeah new new egg went down the two new egg's not a great story no um uh lj from wv says that's a reasonable summary oh thank you <laughs> uh i'll watch it because i'm interested uh i like linus tech tips yeah a lot. me too and and I, but i do understand that they're like a really big yeah you know, youtube channel and and like i i know the struggles of like saying something that you yeah. thought was right and then it's wrong and then it's just forever immortalized in a youtube video. but at the same time like i do understand like what gamers nexus is getting at because like what does what does linus have like 15 million subscribers and stuff yeah he's, got he's probably like the biggest tech person on youtube a lot of people go to him for information if he's putting out wrong information then that's not a good look for him or the companies he's working with for the most part they put in a lot of work and research so yeah. like but you're right when they release a video a day there's some things are going to slip through yeah. the cracks um why why my my where my head's I, I don't know anything about this i'm gonna watch the video where my head's at is why would gamers nexus release an hour-long video shitting on another youtuber i think i think because i think because it goes 
I, somebody when they were they were touring the new Linus lab where they test everything, one of his lab testers said we could do more accurate tests than Gamers Nexus and Unbox something or other therapy. I think it was Unbox therapy. Yeah. Yeah, don't say that. <laughs> don't do that. Just say we could do really good tests yeah. now. You know, you don't have to throw shade like that. Hardware unboxed. Was Hardware it. unboxed. That was it. Yeah. He has done a follow up video on follow up info. Who is he? You talking about Linus? Or are you talking about Gamers Nexus? Gamer, I saw Gamers Nexus uh, put out like a follow up video to his video because Linus did a blog post uh, that sounded pretty rambly, so I didn't pay much attention to it. Mm. So I just don't. I don't. I don't. I need to watch it. But yeah. but it see like I don't think I would. It would take a lot for me to want to upload a video about another YouTuber. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> Even, no matter what the context is. Yeah. That seems bizarre to want to do that. Linus has just posted a response, but then it was taken down. Oh, it was taken down. Okay. But I love me some drama. So I'm yeah. going <laughs> to, I, I would love to dive Especially, all over. Especially this. drama. We're not involved yes, there. Just sit there with absolutely. The popcorn. Yeah. Bob, what do you think of the rumor, this rumor from Nick Baker in the latest Xbox era podcast? Will Switch 2 be PlayStation like? What is PlayStation like? Yeah, mean? what is that? Uh, this, he says the Switch 2 will be PlayStation like. Uh, took pains not to share mu too much uh, so that the rumor won't get shut down, but that's the most he will reveal. But that doesn't tell us that anything. That says nothing. <laughs> PlayStation Lite, like, in what way? PlayStation Lite is a that it's makes, shitty. That makes it makes video games. Yeah, it'll have that video it, games on it. That it draws too much power. That it shuts off at the wrong times. That it uh, overheats. That it gets dusty and the fans clog up. Yeah. What's the what's the problem? I don't know. That's the I, PlayStation has become a generic name for video games, like Nintendo. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know. That's like saying like. An adhesive bandage will be Band-Aid like, <laughs> honestly. That doesn't really it's, tell us anything. It's strange. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe he means it'll be a home console, but that'd be wild. Yeah, I think he's talking about how the Switch successor will have one SKU with a cartridge slot and one without. No, okay. no, I don't, I don't see that. Well. Maybe like a Switch Lite, like a Switch 2 Lite will be digital only. I could see that. I don't know if Nintendo would do that. I don't see a purpose because the disc drive, the, 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 it seems so small. Yeah. It seems so easy. And there's like, it's not like there's any moving parts to it. Yeah. So. It's, it seems easy to, to, to put that in. Yeah. You're not saving much money. Although they will make more money if you don't buy it from a physical store. Yeah. Uh, he responded like three hours. This is about Linus. He responded yeah. about three hours after the video release, but I did not agree with the Billet stuff. Billet is the company that made the core. Also, the fact he deleted it also shows it was not in good taste. No, that tells me that he made the response from the from the dome. Yeah, and the company was like don't do that yeah <laughs> don't don't we need a more fabricated response i'd much rather people who are involved in drama i'd much rather them respond as quickly as possible because then you know it's the truth you yeah know? if they take too long to formulate a response then it's like all right well now you're i don't know who's telling the truth anyway uh that's it we're done Thanks okay. Out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. I don't know what camera I should be looking at right now. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 
Google, and wherever you get your audio podcast from. We're there, baby. But no matter where you get your show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, I will be streaming on Thursday. Tomorrow, I will be working on a video on this Steam Deck. I don't know what to do now because all you people said I should return it, but I don't want to do that because <laughs> I want to make a video. Maybe that makes me as bad as Linus Tech Tips. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I will, you know walk you through the whole process of everything that happens anyway in the video uh i'm gonna go fuck with it some more uh for now go watch jackson he's playing 30xx i'm sure he's doing great in it (laughs) we'll see you later goodbye bye